welcome to Will GT Reviews. Um, I'm Will GT, and you're gonna watch me do a review. It's about as simple as it gets. Uh, if you watched my video last week, I said once again, I lied again. I would do a video with Bethan. Um, she's not been well. Also, it was our anniversary, so I didn't think we should do a, a video. So, so we, we haven't done a video. Now, I'll probably do a video with her eventually, but I'm not gonna do one today. But I am gonna do a review for you. Um, but what review? You probably know because I put it in the title down below. So I don't know why I keep doing this. But anyway, I went to the cinemas and I saw The Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug, Smog, Smudge, Smagoogle, whatever you want to call him, Smaug. Desolation of Smaug. And I went to the cinema and I saw it. And I'm going to review. So let's go. Okay, so The Hobbit. If you haven't seen it, the first film. It's about Bilbo Bagging, Gandalf's trying to get in to go on a quest for a bunch of dwarves. The dwarves want to reclaim their home. Um, and in this film, it carries on from there. Um, they're trying to reclaim their home. And they made three films out of a book. Which is this big. Which they didn't really have to do, but they did. Um, I'm one of the few people that have actually read the book. See, it's, you know, it's, not, it's not a difficult read. I might read it again, to be honest. But yeah, no, 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 no. But yeah, this film it carries on from that. It's still being chased by orcs, um, but they get to the mountain and you meet Smog, 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 and that's, that's Smog. He's the dragon. He's the dragon in the mountain, which is why the dwarves left. I'm doing a really, really rubbish synopsis of the story, but you should go and see it, and you should watch the other films. So I don't really have to tell you. It's that simple. Sorry, I've got a really bad itch. But yeah. That's, that's, that's the, the story, basically. Now, the good points. The good points of the film. Good points. The best point of the film is that the actors in it are really good. You've got Martin Freeman, which he was in Sherlock. Um, he's been in stuff. Love Actually, I think he was in. Um, he was in The Hobbit and The Quick Journey, the first film of this. But yeah, he's really good. His performance as Bilbo is spot on. It's funny. It's endearing. I like it. He's good. Ian McKellen, who's an absolute legend in the acting world and just the world. He's back as Gandalf, and if you've seen The Lord of the Rings, he's pretty much the same. And he's cool, he's. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is the voice of Smaug and the Necromancer. Hmm, who is the Necromancer, I wonder? But yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch, he is brilliant as the voice of Smaug. Um, Orlando Bloom is back as Legolas, and he's really good. Bit of an arsehole, but I always remembered Legolas being a bit of an arsehole. So it's okay there. Um, Hugo, no, Hugo Evans not in it. He is not in it at all. Um, but yeah, the actors, really good. Really enjoyed it. Stephen Fry is in it! Stephen Fry! Everyone knows Stephen Fry. If you're British, you like Stephen Fry. And if you're not British, you like Stephen Fry. Everyone likes Stephen Fry. And he's in this film, so we go and see it. Just for him. The second good thing about it is that the setting, the filming, the look of the villages, the mountains... Smaug, Smaug, the person who animated Smaug got him spot on. He was brilliant. Best CGI character I've seen, basically. Awesome. So basically the cinematography in it is brilliant. They're in New Zealand again filming it, and it's just a beautiful place. Um, they show it at the beginning of the, the film, the trailer, saying, please come to New Zealand, tourist board stuff. And they said, it's 100% Middle Earth. And I like Middle Earth. It's a nice place. It looks lovely. But there's... If it's off the Lord of the Rings, there's a lot of orcs, there's a big man bear thing, there's like dragons and orcs and urukai and trolls and dwarves and hobbits. I don't really want to go. It scares the shit out of me. I would be cacking my pants. Crazy spiders. If you don't like spiders, there's quite a bit of the film you might want to shut your eyes in. Because they're big spiders. But, you know, basically this film is beautiful. The towns, the settings, it just it's really gritty. It's what I've read the book and it's what I would have thought they would have looked like. So I'm very impressed by that. Peter Jackson once again coming up trumps. Good director. 
makes films a bit too long. Third good thing is that it's better than the first film. The first film was okay for a watch, like, but it didn't really do much for the story. Not it. It was basically like the first couple of chapters in the book. There was like no point in it really. They could have cut down a lot of that and just put it in the second film. They could do two th films of this really. They could do one film, but Peter Jackson's. <laughs> um, yeah, it's but no, it's be be much better than the first film. There's more action. There's more story. There's more acting. <laughs> um, there's there's just it's just good. It's a good film. I I really enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it mainly because Benedict Cumberbatch's voice is amazing, and it's Smaug. It's it's just all about Smaug. Basically, the Hobbit is all about the dragon, and in the first film, you don't even see the bloody dragon, which is very annoying. But yeah, it's better than the first film. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is no such thing as a perfect movie. So I'm gonna list off some of the bad points about the movie. My main peeve in this film is the fact it's a pointless love story. There is no need. Peter Jackson's made up a character called Tauriel, I think, and she tries to like fall in love with a dwarf, and it is just no point in it. It adds nothing to the story. I could not give a shit about them two. I want to see the dragon. I want to see him blowing stuff up. I want to see them fight. I want Bilbo to put the ring on, and I want Gandalf to go, you shall not pass. But that, you know, there's no point in my love story. No point. And it's pointless. And I was angry. Did not like. There was no need Peter Jackson. No need at all. Second bad point is that they kept trying to tr trick us, thinking that one of the characters was going to die. They used to do it with Bilbo, they used to do it with Gandalf, they used to do it with Legolas. And if you've seen the other films, you know Bilbo doesn't die, you know Gandalf doesn't die, and you know Legolas doesn't die. So why did they do it? There was no point. There was one point, there was an orc about to stab Legolas, Tauriel saves in the last minute, but I was just there going, stab him. Couldn't give a shit. Go on, stab him in the face, cut his blonde hair up and just chuck him in the river. I couldn't care, because I knew it wasn't going to happen. So it, it did not add anything. They used it at least ten times, at least once every half hour. You know, it was it was so annoying towards the end. It was overused. It was cheap. It towards the end there was no point in it. It was I wasn't I didn't care. I was actually looking forward to one of the characters maybe actually dying, but none of them did. To the because that, that's how annoyed I was. The Peter Jackson kept using it, and it was just so infuriating because it was just repetitive. But yeah. There's only really two bad points in this film. Otherwise, it would have been pretty flawless. Pointless love story, and keep trying to tell us that one of the main characters is going to die, even though we see them in the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, and the second film, and the third film. So there was no point in them. So angry. Oh. But apart from that, this film is really good. I really enjoyed it. It's long, but it's, it's worth it. There's, uh, I couldn't think of much they could have cut out, apart from the in love story. And the in trying to kill people, but we knew they were going to die. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed this film. I would highly recommend it. Any Lord of the Rings fans is probably going to go and see this. I'd go and see it twice, probably. Maybe I'd get it on DVD, because I got a bit uncomfortable in the cinema. <laughs> but yeah, the nods to the Lord of the Rings, the acting, the cinematography. It's worth it just to see Smaug, because that is honestly one of the best things I've seen in the cinema for a while. I really, really, really enjoyed this film. I, I feel it's, it suits most ages, really. There's no point where I wouldn't be like, oh, I want my kid to see that, because it's make-believe. It's fun. It's it's a really interesting story. Acting's great. I, I recommend it highly. So, yeah. A oh, Hobbit passes the Will JT Reviews test. Go and see it right now in any cinema near you. Tiny little side note, the soundtrack by Ed Sheeran's Ice and Fire, I think, or whatever, I thought was really nice. It added a lot to the credits. It sounded kind of middle earthy, because I just, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it added a lot to it. And yes, good job on that one. And El, El, El Ed, Elle is my sister, she did not write that song. Um, but yeah, that's Will JT Reviews for this week, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, like and subscribe. Give me your own opinion on the film in the comments down below. I'm really interested to hear what everyone thought about this film. Um, like and subscribe, I've already said that. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Tumblr. 
Um, also, I've recently started doing a podcast. It's on sports, but I'll put a link down below if you want to listen to it. It's really interesting. I hope you enjoy that. And I, next video, I will be doing another review of Anchorman 2. So if you, you know, really want to hear about my opinion on that, subscribe. But yeah, once again, thanks again for joining me. Hope you enjoyed. And that's all from me. Tati bye.